Miki, did you bring the sand that I asked for? One stack of sand? One stack, not one. Oh, uh, no. Uh, are you kidding me? No. No. Stop. Just throw the entire stack. Miki. Yamete. Uh, stop. Okay. It's over now. I flew here very far away from home. I came to help a brother and sister out here, uh, Miki and Yuki, who woke up in the middle of a mountain. And because they've been digging a lot, they found a skeleton spawner. And so I decided to come here to help them make a farm for it. It's pretty much the same simple design that I used for my own uh, with bubble elevators, uh, water streams that help push the skeletons downward into a killing chamber. Very simple but functional. I guess afterwards they can decide what they want to do to customize it and make it easier for them to use. Alright then, we're done here. Just as with mine, I did an open glass area so that they can view the skeleton spawning. And also to ensure that none of them get stuck and all of them go downward. Remember guys, first you have to remove this torch right here so that they can start spawning. Then you go down into the killing chamber. Then you just hack them as much as you can. Uh, use looting 3 enchantment for good drop rates. Alright, well, I didn't come empty handed when I came here, so here you go. We, I have some gifts in here for you. Take whatever you like. You know, I did end up fixing and decorating my own skeleton farm. Came out real nice. Yeah, no problem, Mickey. <laughs> Looks like someone is enjoying the bubble elevators. <laughs> well, let's continue where we left off in the last video log. I have with me here two shulker boxes with the necessary building materials that I'll be needing in order for us to build our post office. If you recall, last time on Spawn Island, we marked out an area that we'll be using for this community project. Uh, so let's get to it then. The first thing I'll do is remove all this cobblestone here. And then I guess we can start, um, we can start setting out uh, our plan. So what I'll do is um, using dark oak wood, I will be setting out the frame of the structure that way i can get a general idea of the size or scale of the build that i want to get done yeah i think this is a decent size i don't want to do anything too big because it will be too much work and too much resources uh, so the idea that i have is to use dark oak wood as the beams or pillars and then half of the build will have stone bricks and the other half well well for that half we'll be using white concrete and we know that's well we know it's it's a little time consuming to make i wish there was an easier way to make this but i guess i need to expend a little more effort to get what i want right i really hope i don't change my mind and decide not to use the white concrete after i see what it looks like on the build why hello there mr turtle did you come here to be my supervisor while the turtle supervises me i'll be scaffolding upward and then uh setting down the white concrete blocks and hopefully it looks good and i'm not disappointed but i think it will look good because um white concrete goes well with dark oak wood in my opinion plus i don't want to use stone bricks for the entire build it would look too monotonous with all this scaffolding here this is actually looking a lot like a construction site i really like how useful and easy to make these scaffolding blocks are well i mean it doesn't look too bad it looks decent i guess i'll just continue building and see what happens i want to build a little overhang by the entrance that way we can give the structure a bit of dimension so it doesn't look too flat. Yeah, something like that. I'll be using a lot of spruce stairs because this is going to be a giant roof. It's going to take a lot of time to do and a lot of resources, but yep. This this looks nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Let me put some glass panes in here in each of these windows. Then we can use polished underside blocks for the flooring set down a ton of torches to prevent mobs from spawning and and this is looking quite good from the inside as well something i can do is remove a few of the blocks from the wall and replace them with like underside blocks to give it a little texture also we can do the same thing with stone blocks that we have a mix uh, that looks nice can do that for the rest of the build for the entrance i'll be putting down an iron door and a button to open the iron door that way we have a proper entrance and I'll be using this back wall here for the mailboxes. So I'll need to remove some of these blocks right here. I need to install at least 9 modules because there are 9 people including myself in this world. I'll be using redstone lamps as indicators. Then I'll be putting some chests on top of them. So whenever someone has mail in their box the light will come on. 
Yeah, I have to replace the solid blocks above the chests with stairs or else they won't open at all. Now we start building the redstone components for each module. It isn't very difficult. Uh, we have to build something like this. Uh, a block here, one up here, then remove the one at the center. So I'll just have to repeat that same shape for each of the modules. Next I'll be setting down repeaters in the center of these. They will be pulling signals from the block behind. And then at the top, behind the chest, we'll be putting comparators that will send a signal out when there is an item inside of one of the chests. The last thing we need to do is to put some redstone dust at the back. It's the final block. Then we can go ahead and chuck an item in here and test to see if it works. Alright, that one works. Yeah, they seem to be working fine. I've gone ahead and put a sign with my name over my own mailbox. And also for all the people that are known to be in this world, everything is fully functional and ready to use. Now we have officially opened the Isekai Post Office. Let's take a flight and see what it looks like from behind. All of that redstone there will be covered up sometime. Uh, I still have a lot of decorating to do later on. But I want to move on to the next item on the agenda for today and that's this building over here. As you can see it's not far from the mining outpost over there and I'm hoping you remember what was here the last time we were working on something. Yes, it's that skeleton farm that we worked on the last time. I built a proper structure to house it safely and um, look, berry bushes. This building is quite similar to the one in the Taiga village that I woke up in. As you can see we have bubble elevators so let's go down and check it out. I've done quite the renovations here. We have a really nice stalactite ceiling going on here. Um, as you can see, I decorated the dungeon around the skeleton spawner to look a little jungly, I guess. I put a redstone lamp at the top so that I can toggle between turning on and turning off the skeleton spawner using this switch that I installed over here. Now skeletons are spawning and the water stream is pushing them down into the kill chamber. So let's go down and see what it's like down there. I did come back down here to decorate it a little bit more as well using stone blocks on the side and, and stone bricks. Time to have some fun getting rid of these really noisy skeletons. A very useful thing that I installed here is this grindstone because I keep getting a lot of enchanted bows and so what I do is disenchant them here so that I can get the um, experience from them and that way nothing really is wasted. Speaking about things not being wasted, I have an idea for something to build right here. As you can see I have with me some chests, a blast furnace, some hoppers and some signs. So let's get started then. The idea behind what I want to do here is something to recycle the bow and armor drops that I get from the skeleton farm using the disenchanted bows as fuel to smelt the armors into nuggets so we will have gold nuggets and iron nuggets. I know it's going to be a chore and there are better ways of getting gold nuggets but I really want to do this because I guess I, I, guess I just really like the idea of minimizing waste. Alright, let's give this a test run, shall we? This chest is the input for our armors, whether it is gold armor or iron armor. Um, they, yeah, they should go in the furnace like that. And this chest here is for the bow, which will be used for fuel. And yep, it works pretty fine. It's uh, the one bow smelts one item. So as long as we get an influx of that from the farm itself, we should be getting as much nuggets as they can produce, right? I decided to label each of the chests with signs that I had on me. We have the input for armor, for bows, and the output which is the nuggets. Another thing I wanted to do before I leave is change the lighting in this room. So get rid of these ugly torches and cover up the glowstones with slabs which still allow light to pass through. This farm produces a lot of bones. So I got an idea of a shop that I can open on Spawn Island. I didn't expect I would be back here so fast. Alright, since this thing will be temporary, uh, we can just place it here for now until I build an actual shop. The design of this temporary shop stand here is based on one of the structures in the meeting place of a plains village. I liked how it looked so I decided to use it for this idea. What's going on with all of these wandering traders everywhere? This one is going for a swim. Those poor little llamas they have to be dragged everywhere he goes. So in one chest I decided I wanted to sell coal blocks, uh, 2 diamonds for 16, 2 and a quarter stacks of coal. And in the second chest I'll be selling the bone blocks for 1 diamond per stack of bone blocks which is a really great deal. Because of the color of the goods that I'm selling in this shopping stand I decided to call this shop the Ebony and Ivory. 
let's move on to the next item on the agenda for today. Getting a lot of bone meal from the farm really helps out a lot, with the exception of the nether wart, which doesn't use it, but the cane, the carrots, and also the bamboo over there. I can just grow these as fast as possible. Next on the list is to build an experience and guardian farm. This is going to be the biggest project ever and I have a list of all the things I need right here. So I have to start gathering all of the necessary resources. And also since I already have a name for one of my horses, I'd like uh, a name suggestion from you guys for the horse in iron armor. The best place to get obsidian is in the end from these pillars here, so I'll be mining them until I get 3 stacks. I literally had to strip the entire pillar down for me to get 3 stacks from it. See it's completely gone now. I also need a ton of stone blocks. Let me check my list again to see if I have everything I need. Uh, it seems correct. I think I have everything. Okay. Just one more stop before we head to the ocean monument. We'll stop here at the post office to drop off something for someone. Oh, we have a... Hello, Mr. Turtle. Hi. Oh, there's more. <laughs> How many turtles are going to spawn in here? I guess we'll find out later. Anyway, uh, I, Loki Bonds wants to buy a Silk Touch Enchanted book from me. So I decided to sell it to him for two diamonds. So... Uh, when he comes to receive it here, he'll be leaving the two diamonds in my box. Oh, I'm already exhausted with this project and I haven't even started yet. As usual, I must set up a workstation nearby. And then I have to build 25 containment capsules, one for each pillar that you see on the monument. But before I do any of that at all, I have to set up my conduit so that um, I can breathe easily underwater without any issue. And this also helps with mining faster underwater. Because normally you would mine really slow. Okay, let me set that there. Put the conduit on. Uh, why why isn't it working? What ha- Oh, maybe I have to get rid of this. Ah, oh, alright, that did the trick. Wow, I was almost about to start drowning. So I'll build the first capsule around this pillar right here. Uh, what I want is, is to make it three blocks wide. And also three blocks tall. Like that, then I'll start shipping out a portal with the obsidian blocks. Then I need to cover the back of the portal so that we can light it up. Use a sponge to drain all the water out of the capsule. Then we light up the portal with a flint and steel. Alright, next we'll add two buckets of water to make a steady stream. So that whenever the guardian spawns in here where that prismarine block is, they will be pushed inside of the portal where they will be collected in the nether. And I guess that's it for one capsule. That's the general idea behind it. So what I need to do now is make one for all the other pillars that we have here. And then I'll get back to you. Alright, as you can see, I've managed to complete all 25 capsules all around. And now I have to figure out a way to link all of them underwater. I want to pass a redstone line under each of them right below here so I'll place these blocks here and stretch it all the way down to the end. On this line of blocks I'll be placing the redstone and right here I will set this so that I can set sticky pistons on top something like that and now I'm going to place slabs on both sides like this so that when we dry out the um, inside with a sponge water won't get inside and we can put we can easily put a redstone line inside. Alright, in the end it should look something like this and what I'll do now is, is, is grab my sponges and I'll insert them inside of this tunnel here and dry up all the water. The fact that I use slabs will prevent water from entering afterward and also we have access to the inside of the line at the bottom where we can place the redstone wiring. After drying it out with sponges, I can start placing the redstone dust down. And after every 15 redstone dust, I put in a repeater. That way you can send the signal all the way down the line to each and every capsule. Let me just add in the sticky pistons for all the other capsules that I didn't get to. Uh, I feel like I should have done this before I added the water in here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's get out of here. Set those blocks back there and go to the others. Now that I'm done with that, let's give it a test, shall we? Flick this lever here and yes, the pistons push the block upward, preventing 
the guardians that spawn here from going into the portal, effectively turning off the farm. Oh no! The portals from the guardian farm linked to my portal that leads back to the mining outpost. I bet since I came here, a lot of them went back to the mining outpost. I'll have to check that later. What I need to do now to remedy that situation is to build a portal here that links to all of the portals in the guardian farm in the overworld. That way all the guardians that spawn and go into the portal can exit here and I can have them all gather up into one chamber. Just as I thought, some of the guardians made it over here. Whoa, there is a lot of them over here. Oh no, 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 whoa. That would have killed me immediately. The next thing I want to do is cover this capsule here with glass because I had an issue where creepers spawn out here on top of these capsules and they jump into the portal and that can be a little bit problematic so I'll do that for all the capsules. The final thing that I need to do according to the book written by Silent Whisperer is to find each of the guardians that are roaming around the monument and get rid of them that way whenever they spawn they will only be able to spawn inside of one of the capsules. Before we proceed, we need to count that 9 guardians are in the capsule, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, alright, perfect. I've gone ahead and built a drop-off chamber in the nether side of the guardian farm and I'll be putting down some signs here and some lava that way when they come out of the portal and they drop in they get damaged by the lava and that way when they arrive at the killing chamber they are weak enough for us to handle. Now that we're done with up there we can do a collection system down here. I'll be doing the same simple collection system that I use for the skeleton farm using a chest and some hoppers and some slabs on top of the hoppers and also some activated trap doors to keep the guardians from spilling out. Yeah that's good enough. And now it's time to truly test this farm. Let's flick this lever here and all the guardians should now be easily flowing inside of the portals and entering the nether. I think the bird's eye view of this farm here it looks really neat and symmetrical. I like it a lot. Look at this guy here. Why isn't he going in the portal? Hey, stop being stubborn, go inside, go! I'm here in the nether side of the farm and I brought myself my mending pickaxe. It's pretty worn out, so what I'll do is use this potion of harming here and throw it at them and use all the experience so that I can test to see if it gives enough experience to mend the entire pickaxe. Well it almost did, which is good considering I forgot to take off my armor and elytra as well, so those probably got mended too. If there is anything I feel I should fix so far is to move that platform one block upward, and also I'll be decorating this chamber down here, but unfortunately, that's all the time I have for video log number 4. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video log.